Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning to everybody on Zoom. And I believe we have Facebook Live running. So happy to see folks who are on Facebook Live and glad you're with us this morning. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. And if you could see behind me, you would see candles for the first and second Sunday of Advent lit and the third and fourth Sunday of Advent lit. And hopefully I won't burn down my room divider during the service. Um, so this is the uh, culmination of our, uh, of our season of Advent. And obviously the next feast we're gonna celebrate is Christmas and we'll gather together again on Christmas Eve. So um, we will begin, oh, as always, I encourage you to sing out and lustily because uh, you're the only one who can hear you sing, even though Maddie is our song leader. And we welcome our guests who have joined us today. And we'll begin with our prelude. Gail Kramer is our uh, guest pianist today. So, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our opening hymn is a rendition of the Magnificat called Canticle of the Turning. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And yet, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Second Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of the gods stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the, all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, 
Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the lesson this morning is the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, which we will read together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. 
And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary departed and said, here am I the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to, you, to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, you may not be aware of this, but occasionally at church, we get strange mail. I get mail from, not very often, but I get mail occasionally from Africa where someone is writing about the dire situations in the church in Africa, and usually there's a request for money. Sometimes I get mail from uh, some usually self-ordained pastor who mm, might want to comment about the social policies of the Episcopal Church and has a form letter basically that they've written, uh, but it's, uh, the envelope is, is addressed to me. So it's not unusual to get, to get odd letters and uh, to not recognize the address or anything. And I got a letter this past week that I wanted to read to you. Here's what it said. It was addressed to St. James. It says, Dear Christian, Hi, it's Gabriel, Arch Archangel Gabriel here. You can call me Gabe, or you could even call me Gabby, who is to say whether an angel is male or female. If you don't know me, I've been around a long time. Some folks even say that I was around in the days of Noah's great grandfather. I think I look pretty good for my age. In the book of Daniel, you may have heard that I am known as a guardian angel of Israel. And I helped David, excuse me, and I helped Daniel understand his vision. And I was even at one point sent to destroy evil agents against God and also to keep watch over paradise. All that happened so long ago, hardly worth mentioning except I'm no newcomer. And I'm sort of a mysterious creature in Jewish, Jewish mysticism even to this day. But in these days, you probably know me as a messenger because that is what we angels do. We deliver messages from God. That could be pretty amazing. I've heard of folks reaching for a defibrillator when I come around. Just look at how awesome I seem. Since the beginning, artists have tried to capture my image. Look at my wings, how gorgeous and magnificent they are. I try not to frighten people. But, and usually the first thing I have to say to them is, do not be afraid. Sometimes though, I'm not even sure how I come across to folks. Some have said that I appear as a beam of energy or light, but nevertheless, I'm stunning. What I want to tell you about though, is the visit I had with Mary. I recently saw Joseph and Zechariah also, but my visit to Mary was very special. You see, God asked me to deliver a message to Mary. You might not know her. She's about 14 years old. 
She lives in a poor family. She lives in Nazareth, a small town of about 400 people. She always seems to be reading a book. Turns out that book is the Bible, her Bible. She's usually reading from Isaiah, that prophet who foretold that a virgin would conceive and bear a child. I was sent there to ask her the biggest favor ever. Mary, God is with us now. Don't be afraid. Would you be willing, because God will make it so, would you be willing to conceive a child, a son, and carry him in your womb, even though you may be ostracized and gossiped about? Would you be willing to be pregnant and give birth to a child, and not just any child, but a child who will turn the world upside down? Would you be willing to bear a holy child? And she said, yes. She answered me, let it be to me according to your will. So, message delivered, response given. I thought we were all set. And then it turns out that Mary, my God, she knew, Mary, young, poor, vulnerable, but also courageous and daring and purposeful. She knew, and she had a message for us too. Here's part of it. She said, though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me and your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn, you will show your might, put the strong to flight for the world is about to turn my heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near. The world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from their throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise that holds us bound to the spear till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. The world is about to turn. Turns out Mary is there from the beginning to the end. She watches her child of God begin to turn the world back round right. 
And here we are again, friends, remembering Mary, who realized that nothing is impossible with God, who exclaimed, let it be to me according to your word. And here we are remembering the holy child she bore. And my message to you, dear Christians, is that we're a part of this too. God has a message for you. I am with you. Do not be afraid. But will you also bear the holy within you? Will you also give birth to my love? The world once again is about to turn. Will you pass the message along? As God passed it to me and I passed it to Mary and Mary passes it to us. Will you pass my message along? Love, Gabriel. Let us continue our worship with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We especially pray for Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for Bonnie Perry, our bishop. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and truth and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence of the earth for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Especially we pray for Alice Van Wambeke and her daughter and son-in-law and their new baby boy, Alice's grandson, who was born yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Especially for Shannon Herbal and her surgery tomorrow. For Ross, Kevin's son, whose house um, had a major fire this past week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. And we pray especially for the repose of the soul of Virginia Bortz. Jane Hewitt's sister. We pray for Jane and Emily and Patty as they mourn her passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we sum up all the prayers of our hearts and minds by joining together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. It's good to see you all on this Sunday before Christmas. Reminder that our Christmas service, Christmas Eve service, will be at seven o'clock on Christmas Eve. And um, I'm wondering if Jerry is here or if Len is in um, hearing distance. Hello. Yes. Hello. What we'd like to do is have a box of candles on the front porch of the church. Uh, these are battery operated candles. For those of you who don't have 
real life candles, but would like to have one for Christmas Eve, especially for when we sing uh, Silent Night. I'm wondering if between Len and Jerry and some folks who live by the church, if we could have that box of candles put out by the door. Um, sure. They're located in the sacristy right now, I believe. And um, feel free to come and pick up your candle. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna steal them, so I think we can leave them out um, if you'd like one. And if you can't come to the church and would like one of the battery operated candles, if you could let- Me know. If you would let Jerry Brand know, we'll make sure that one or two or three, however many you need, um, get delivered to you. So uh, at coffee hour, you could do that or send out an email tomorrow uh, to let everybody know. But you're obviously welcome to have your own candle. So uh, Christmas Eve, online service at seven o'clock, and I'll be sure to send out the Zoom announcement sooner than the morning of. <laughs> also, Julie Lowry is putting together um, a slide presentation. Julie, is there anything you need to say about that? Um, just uh, last call uh, to send in your pictures of Christmas traditions, Christmas past, any photo that just makes you, uh, fills you with the Christmas spirit. Okay. But probably not pi pictures of Santa Claus, <laughs> sorts of things. But how many pictures do you have right now? Do you know? Oh, I'd say about 20. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So bring in some more folks. That'll be fun. Um, on Christmas day, uh, we will not have a service. We're invited to join the diocese at 10 a.m for Bishop Perry uh, presiding at a short service at the cathedral. And uh, the Zoom link for that will be coming to you all. And then also on the 27th, which is next Sunday, we're also invited to join the Bishop with uh, the diocese to uh, worship from the cathedral at 11 o'clock and um, Bishop Perry will preside and preach. What she's anxious for us to be present for is that Governor Whitmer uh, will be attending in some way, I think maybe live, because um, our Bishop would like for uh, Governor Whitmer to see how many there are of us and that we um, consist of a large voting uh, block and that um, we want to greet her as Episcopalians. And we would like her to see um, that there are a whole bunch of us who can gather together and have gospel values that we're interested in seeing enacted in the state of Michigan. And then on Sunday, September, excuse me, Sunday, January 3rd, we'll have lessons and carols and I believe we need about seven readers. So if you would let Wendy know if you're interested in being a reader, you don't have to be on the readers list in order to read a lesson from Lessons and Carols. So if you're interested in doing that as a one-off, um, please let Wendy know. Also, um, towards the end of January, uh, Janet Torno is convening a small task force slash committee to uh, think again about our use of the mission house. This is not a, um, a guarantee that we're going to change how we use the mission house, but it's a good idea, I think, for us to every now and then revisit um, what the mission of the house is. So if you're interested in that, uh, get in touch with Janet Torno, who I don't think is on this call right now, uh, but most of you know how to find her. Are there other announcements that need to be made? Um, Kevin, if you could um, 
stop the share there so I can see a gallery view. Um, then I would be able to see if anybody has their hand up. There's Margaret. I would just like to remind people who have not yet submitted their pledges that it's very easy to do it through the Google link. And we only have received about 32 maybe so far. So it would be helpful if people would follow through on that. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, we're intentionally calling it intentions to give so that you all understand that a pledge is your intention to give. And we understand that circumstances can change and um, pledges uh, can be adjusted during the year. So what we need to know is your intention to give so that we can um, create a budget that's realistic. And with 32 pledges, I think we're missing about not missing, but usually we have about 45 to 47. So there are a few of them out there. Kathy Sandmeyer, did I see your hand up? You have to go off mute. You have to go off mute. You're on mute still. Okay. So there you go. Um, Friday Bible study will not meet next Friday, it being Christmas and all. So but we will, we will meet on New Year's Day. We figured nobody was going to be doing anything much anyway. So we will be meeting at 10 o'clock on New Year's Day. And if anybody uh, wants to pop in, um, it's taken us a month to get through the first chapter of John. So we'll see how long it takes us to get through the second chapter of John, which we will begin on New, New Year's Day. So um, just uh, firing off an email and I'll put you on the list and, uh, all you got to do is plug in on on January the 1st. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kathy. And your uh, announcement about Bible study reminds me of my announcement about what I'm calling Advent art. We had a wonderful discussion last uh, Wednesday about the, the um, what was it about? The Magnificat? No. The Magnificat. No, it was about the Magnificat, but we used some of these photos, er, photos, paintings, uh, two weeks before to talk about uh, the visitation of Gabriel to Mary <coughs> and, and had a fabulous time. And uh, by looking at paintings, uh, poetry, song, whatnot, um, over an hour, I think we could, I think we could claim that we have a deeper understanding of um, what the biblical story is. So this Wednesday at seven o'clock, we will be uh, considering the birth of Jesus in various art forms. So I encourage you to come to that and there'll be an email coming out with the Zoom link for that. Other announcements? Okay, any offerings or, um, yeah, offerings of thanksgiving and gratitude. I hear when I see Wendy talking, but maybe to Len. Okay. What was the best thing that happened to you this past week? Well, um, this is Candy, and hey, Candy. Um, my son, daughter in law, and granddaughter are able to visit come this week. They weren't able to come for Thanksgiving due to COVID exposure, but they had instituted some more extreme social distancing in their house so they're coming and I feel like a kid on Christmas morning being able to see my granddaughter and my kids and um, I'm still holding my breath till they get here because you know 2020 life is different but right. I am really looking forward to it and um, it's a blessing. And I know I talked to my niece yesterday. She hasn't seen her daughter and grandkids in a year. They live that far away. And so, um, you know, this is going to pass, but I feel blessed to have them. And I'm, you know, beyond the moon. I'm trying, I'm trying to rein it in just in case, <laughs> just in case, because 
that's life. But, but um, anyway, she's the joyful little terrorist and we can't wait to see her. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Good for you. When do you, you keep making motions? I, I know, I know. I do have one this time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. No, Len wanted me to make sure that I told everybody that our good news was that um, Denise is pregnant and having a baby in June. Oh my goodness. Oh, so, yes. So we will have another a little girl. So we'll have two of each by the and summer. She just had a baby. Oh, well, yeah, she did. But you know, sometimes when you get to that age, you just got to yeah. do what you got to do. So. so Stellan will have a little baby sister. Yes. And Raylan's going to have a little baby brother. brother. Yep. Yep. It's going to so, be crazy there at Grandma and Grandma's very house. crazy. <laughs> Yes. Congratulations. In a good way. Wonderful. Hey, Wendy. Hey, yes. If you need me to talk to those girls, I will. Oh. <laughs> Says the woman who bore four children. Yeah. No, I think this is probably it. So that, that we're gonna we're gonna love them as we can. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Kathy, do you have Carol? Your... I'm, oh. I'm wondering, uh, Shannon, how's your father? Oh. Thank you. He's doing well. His eyes are scratchy, um, but his he can tell that his vision has been like overcorrected and they do that at first. And um, his brain has to repattern yeah. where his eyes have been positioned. So it's going to take time and he can't read right now or see very well because he's got this salve in his eyes. He's yeah. just impatient. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to be, you know, having goop in his eyes. He wants to okay. see. Thank but you. The surgery was successful, it sounds like. He, yeah, we're really have very hopeful. He has really good signs. So thank you for asking. Sure. <laughs> and Shannon, what about um, you're having surgery this week? Yeah, tomorrow. I'm having my surgery on my foot. It's just going to be like, removal of a bunion and arthritis and a bone spur, but it's gonna put me in a boot for six weeks, but I've done it before, so why not, you know? Yeah, there's there are several folks in this congregation who know about boots. Oh so yeah. <laughs> we probably could, could start a little closet and people could choose what size they wanna wear. <laughs> exactly, you wouldn't have to pay for them then. Yeah. Anybody else? Grace? Hi, um, I just wanted to say that I had the privilege this last week of helping to pass out the faith in action presents to yeah. our families. And there was so much joy and gratitude in that room from everybody that I just wanna say thank you to everybody who contributed. It was a joyful day, thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, hey, anybody else for right now? Okay, uh, we're, we're gonna have a chance to listen to another, uh, another version of Gabriel's message to, uh, to Mary. And this one was performed by Sting. So, um, the words will pretty much be the same, but uh, the rendition might be a little different than what you've heard before. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame.
Dear friends, may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth now into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. leave our Facebook friends now or they'll leave us. So uh, blessed Sunday to you all. We hope to see you on Christmas Eve. 
So folks, give me a chance here to stop the Facebook stream.